Hello friends, in this video lecture we are going to discuss the functions of important components which are used in automatic voltage control. So let us begin. So friends, in last lecture we have discussed the working of AVC that is automatic voltage control which is used in the power system uh, to maintain the voltage or the output voltage of the alternator. Now in this lecture we are going to discuss the important functions or the functions of the important components. Okay, so first let us list out the important components which are there in the AVC that is automatic voltage control unit. The first component will be your potential transformer potential transformer the second one is the differencing unit third one is amplifier or we can call error amplifier the fourth one is SCR power amplifier, SCR power amplifier and exciter field. The fifth one is the alternator and the sixth one is stabilizing transformer. So these are the six important components of AVC. Now we will discuss one by one the functions of this important component. So we'll begin with the first one that is potential transformer. See what this potential transformer does, it provides the samples of terminal voltage of the alternator that is vt okay t the suffix t indicate terminal voltage of the alternator so the function is to provide the samples of the terminal voltage of the alternator then comes the differencing unit the differencing unit it is here the summing block it is the differencing unit what it does it provides the error signal it provides the error signal which is e is equal to v reference minus vt or else i can call this signal as actuating signal because it act it actuates the process of controlling the field excitation of the alternator See, we are controlling the excitation of the alternator in order to control the voltage. Okay, so this differencing unit, whatever signal it is providing, that signal actuates the process of controlling the field excitation of the alternator. Again, uh, this signal, it is suppressed and carrier modulated. Okay because uh, the carrier frequency and the system frequency carrier and system frequency is 50 hertz okay so this error signal is suppressed and carrier modulated because uh, that uh, signal has to carry uh, this error signal okay then next unit next component is error amplifier okay what it what this error amplifier do it demodulates demodulate and amplifies the error signal what this error amplifier it does it demodulates and amplify the error signal and it has got the gain equal to Ka. 
okay see this block diagram we have already discussed in the previous lecture this is the uh, modeling of this block diagram this is the model of the this block diagram in laplace domain okay so here this error amplifier it is uh, what uh, it is having it is having a gain is equal to ka okay so it has got gain ka is okay then comes the fourth unit the fourth component which is scr power amplifier scr power amplifier and exciter field and exciter field okay so what this scr power amplifier and exciter field does first you see this scr power amplifier what it does it provides the necessary power amplification to the signal which is going to control the excitation of the alternator okay you see here the scr power amplifier is present over here okay so from the error signal whatever signal we are receiving it is providing this scr power amplifier it is actually providing necessary power amplification okay uh, so that that signal can be given to the exciter field okay what this exciter field is doing actually it is controlling the main exciter okay it is going to control the main excitation so here you see uh, I'm going to consider these two as a one unit a CR power amplifier and exciter field so here if I consider the time constant of a CR power uh, a CR power amplifier uh, to be very small okay uh, and that too if if we can able to neglect that then in that case the transfer function for this uh, a CR power amplifier and exciter field can be written as Ke divided by 1 plus this TEFS, where this TEF it is the time constant of exciter field, time constant of exciter field okay then comes the next uh, component which is alternator see the alternator field is excited by this main exciter at voltage is equal to ve okay so i can say that the field of the alternator it is been excited by the exciter at voltage is equal to ve and at no load condition at no load condition what we are getting the output or the terminal voltage of the alternator it is proportional to the current in the exciter field okay output voltage is proportional to field current okay now at no load condition we can write the transfer function for alternator as it will be kg divided by 1 plus t g f s where this TGF is the generator field time constant. Okay, generator or you can call alternator. Alternator field time constant. Okay, no doubt when we are going to put the load on the alternator, we will experience the dip in the voltage at the terminal of the alternator okay on load condition the voltage 
will have a dip now this depression in the voltage actually it is a complex function of direct and quadrature axis current okay so here this effect when the, uh, we are going to put the load on the alternator how the voltage is going to depress uh, it has been represented systematically with the help of this block called gl see if you try to model that uh, alternator uh, with respect to this uh, re, uh, direct axis and quadrator axis uh, current uh, it will be beyond the scope of this discussion okay so for that for the sake of simplification let us consider that that uh, effect has been systematically represented by this block gl okay then the uh, next comes uh, is next block is stabilizing transformer it was sixth it is stabilizing transformer you see that we have discussed the two time constants here uh, the first one it is here tef and another one is tgf tef it is the time constant of exciter field and tgf it is the time constant of generator field so what is happening here this tef and this tgf both are large enough okay uh, and they are large enough and because of that they are unable or they are not able to impair with the dynamic response of the system okay since they are large enough so what happens because of that they will not uh, impair okay it will not impair with system dynamic response now if you recall the uh, concepts of the control system we know that the dynamic response of the system can be improved by internal derivative internal derivative feedback loop okay this concept we know from the control system part so here this stabilizing transformer what it is doing it is providing that uh, derivative feedback in that system okay so you see here uh, the primary side or it is been taking input from the main exciter okay since it has been connected from this main exciter okay and the secondary it has been connected between these two amplifiers okay so uh, we can write for the transfer function of this stabilizing transformer as see as the secondary it is being connected between the two amplifier so we can say that uh, effectively it is taking zero current okay secondary current effectively it will be zero so now i want to write the transfer function for this stabilizing transformer okay so for that we can write it as ve that is the primary side okay because this v is it is actually the voltage across the main exciter field so that ve is equal to r1 ist plus l1 d by dt of that ist okay similarly we can write vst that is the secondary side voltage as the secondary current is effectively zero so i can write that vst is equal to mutual inductance okay m into d by dt of ist okay it is the current in the 
uh, stabilizing transformer okay if i take the laplace of this let us take the laplace of this two let us call this as equation one and this as equation two let's take the laplace transform okay if i apply the laplace transform so i'll get v e of s is equal to this will be r1 ist of s plus l1 s ist of s all this as equation number three similarly this v st of s it will become m into derivative or uh, laplace will be s only or uh, s into ist of s equation number four let us uh, transfer function is it is actually nothing but output by input okay so let us take the transfer function as vst of s upon ve of s okay so what i will do is i'll take ist of s ist of s common from numerator and denominator and it will get cancelled so we will left here with the that s into m okay divided by this term uh, r plus s into l1 r1 plus s into l1 okay so furthermore we can modify it as s m by r1 let's take 1 by r1 as common so we'll get here 1 plus s into l1 by r1 okay so here this m by r1 will take the gain s into i can write kst divided by then comes 1 plus this L1 by R1 will be the time constant. So I'll call it as TST of S. So this is how we will get the transfer function for the stabilizing transformer. Thank you very much.